Faith always pushes on through, and that's great faith. Now, here's another aspect of great faith. Now, here, now this is kind of a strange thing, but it's something that I have noticed, but yet there's, a, there's a, almost a contradiction to it. But it's, it's not, but it feels like it sometimes. <clears throat> the greatest faith that you've ever had was when you got born again. Isn't that, isn't that what we said earlier? Because technically you weren't God's child, but you decided to believe the word. You had no proof, but you believed the word. So you had no evidence other than the word of God. And then you had to decide with no evidence that you were going to believe it, and then you accepted it and decided it was true. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, the more evidence, and, and this goes back to my early days of learning faith, the more evidence you see, okay, let me, let me put it this way. If you, let's say you're trying to believe that God will give you, you know, a, a better car, okay, If you, because you need a better car. Your car won't start half the time. It's undependable, whatever. You need another car. Hopefully it'll be a better car, right? You don't want the same thing. You don't want another problem, right? You want a better car. So let's say you believe that God's going to give you a car. Now, once God gives you that car, then the next time you start to believe God, you've got that car as evidence. I believe God for a car. I got the car. God is faithful. right? So your faith can grow. Isn't that right? But technically, the greatest faith is not having any evidence. So technically, I know this sounds strange, but technically, the more evidence you have, the less faith it takes to walk. That makes sense? And it used to, when I first started praying for people, ministering to people, we had seen some, you know, seen some stuff, not drastically. Then we started learning some things and the results went up. Now, the more results I saw, the less faith I had to have the next time. Why? Because God was with me with the bear. He was with me with the lion. This giant ain't going to be nothing. Why? See, you're putting your past victories with your now problem and now you have faith in God that because God helped you with the bear, helped you with the lion, he will help you with this Goliath. Amen. So in that sense, see, your faith is growing, but at the same time, now you've got evidence, so technically it's less faith every time. So you can, you can say it for me. This is the, the, the contradiction of faith. So the more you've seen the more faith you have, but the less faith it takes for this thing to happen. Does that make sense? Amen. Because now when I lay hands on the sick, I'm, I'm not even thinking faith. You know, there were times I'm thinking, oh, and I believe, I believe, you know, and I'm, and I'm <laughs> God, you said, and I believe. Well, I, I, guess what? That's still there. I still believe God. But I'm not even thinking, is this going to happen? It's like seen it happen hundreds of thousands of times now. This is not a problem. Amen. And especially when somebody, well, have you ever seen this? I'm like, no, you're going to be my first. Boom. <laughs> Why? Why? Because I've seen God with the bear. I've seen him with the lion. This thing, just because I hadn't seen it, doesn't mean it's unbeatable. For some reason, we think if somebody's never seen it, it's unbeatable. No, finally, I get to grow. Amen. I can grow. Why? Because now I've seen a giant. Amen? So whenever the giant shows up, don't be afraid of him. You rejoice. Amen. Thank you, God, for delivering this giant into my hands. And then you tell the giant, you're going down today. Amen. Isn't that simple? That's what faith is supposed to be in you. Amen. So, all right, let's keep going.